Park Racetrack in Cheshire plays host to the next round of the 2019 BRSCC Mazda MX-5 Super Series. It's a big grid of cars racing this weekend with some new faces also joining the series and plenty of great racing action expected as we've enjoyed throughout the bulk of the season so far. And with only two former winners from this season on the grid, there's every chance that we could see some new names appearing on the top step of the podium this weekend. Alton Park is a circuit that challenges the drivers, but it's one that they all love. And it's no surprise, therefore, that this weekend in particular, the Super Series is the place to be. Well, the cars then are lining up on the grid now ahead of our first 20-minute race of the day. Joe Marshall Burks and James Kell are those two race winners from earlier on this year, but they've both only got a solitary win apiece. Gary Townsend and Clyde Powell's are on row two. Matt Pickford and Darren Kell share the third row ahead of Simon Orange and Declan Lee. Then Simon Fleet and Alex Miller to round out the top ten. Steve Dolman and Christina Holly are on row six ahead of David O'Reilly and Liz Walton. Then it is Natalie Brooks and Chris Lindley with Duncan Harris and Jude Worley at the back of the grid. Patrick Collins, we believe, also starting out of position right at the tail of the order, having not set a time in qualifying. So, 20 minutes of racing action, bright but slightly overcast skies above us. We're ready to go racing for the first time of three today in a busy day of action for the MX-5 Super Gear Series on board with Patrick Collins from the back of the grid. And what a start that was. He's passed three or four cars already before he even reaches the start-finish line. James Kell, though, will lead the field into Old Hall Corner for the first time. Joe Marshall Burke second, and that looked like Gary Townsend trying to go around the outside in third position. Maybe try and challenge the top two. On board with Christina Holly now in one of Brian Chandler's cars, the BC Motorsport squad. Down the avenue, through the right-hand kink at Denton, then hard on the brakes through Cascade. Darren Kell there, father of James, on the inside of Simon Fleet. We're on board with Patrick Collins, though, who is carving his way through the order. He's had at times a challenging year this year but when things are going right he is one of the quickest drivers on the circuit and he's hoping now to try and assert that uh, authority albeit from some way back on the grid in this one through island bend they go then there is the number 52 car of steve dolman making a welcome return to the brscc's mx5 fray the former runner in the mx5 super cup a few years ago he goes to the inside of david o'reilly the black and orange car picks up another position through the shell hairpin and then behind him, the gulf of the green car there 999 is Patrick Collins. So you can see the amount of cars that he's already been able to overtake on board with Patrick now. Stalwart on the MX5 Super Series, been here pretty much since the start, at the start of 2018. And still enjoys his racing, regardless really of what the results are. So Kel and Marshall Burke's the top two. Further back, there's the usual shuffling of the order into the Hislop chicane, where it is more or less single file. You can run wheel to wheel, but it's a risky place to try and make an overtake stick. On this first lap of the day, no one taking any huge risks. It's a triple header this weekend, as it always is. Three races over the weekend. The difference being that they are all on the same day here at Alton Park. It's a one-day race meeting. So they've qualified and they have three races all in the same day. That's an hour and 20 minutes of track time, which is great value for money, but rather tiring, I imagine, for the drivers. Many of you are maybe not the most experienced of racers uh, in the world. So this is certainly going to be a trying day. They'll all want to make absolutely sure, though, to keep the cars in one piece in, in these uh, first couple of races because there's very limited repair time between the races themselves. So on board then with Matt Pickford underneath the bridge, end of lap number one. Up towards the first corner they'll go once again. Now there was a board being held out there over the wall. We believe a couple of cars are being investigated for start line infringements. So um, we'll have to wait and see. And Simon Orange scrapping away at Patrick Collins. Oh, contact from Steve Dolman and off into the barriers goes Steve. Oh, what a shame. Patrick Collins just cannot buy any good luck this season. Whenever something goes wrong, he just seems to be in the firing line. And uh, Patrick, completely innocent there. <laughs> Look at that. Arm resting on the window. He's seen it all before, and he will limp his way, I'm sure, back to the pit lane, where the team will now have a real job to get that car fixed for race two. Steve Dolman's car, likewise, is heading down the uh, access road at Cascade. For now, this battle, you don't want to take your eyes away from it. They're leaning on each other into Druids. All that was uh, feisty stuff there from Simon Orange. He wasn't letting Clive Powell go around the outside of him at Druids, that's for sure. That's killed Clive's momentum off the corner. So Darren Kell now fishing around to try and get past him. And, uh, into the braking zone at Lodge. He might have just found a gap on the inside, but he wasn't late enough on the brakes. Both of them slower off the corner than Simon Fleet. I think that's Declan Lee also catching them now, so 
car back into cars and it's developed. Now we get the last lap board then. One more lap of the Alton Park International Circuit between these drivers and the chequered flag. Looks like Clyde Powell's is fairly safe in fifth now. The next question is who will be sixth? Well, we know it won't be Simon Orange because he's got this 10 second penalty. So really it's between Simon Fleet and Darren Kell. And those two aren't all that close together on the track at the moment. Now, there are the leading two. Where has Gary Townsend gone? Because Gary Townsend, I commented on last time we saw him, was not that far behind them. And now they are the only two cars in shot. So uh, Joe Marshall Burks and James Kell have somewhere along the line lost Gary Townsend. I believe he's still running, but he's had a slow lap somewhere. And there he is at the top of the hills. He must have been off the road, Gary Townsend. And he's actually rejoined still in third place, such as the advantage these three had over the rest of the field. So don't know what's happened to Townsend. He'll still be on the podium by the looks of it, unless there's a problem with that car, but hopefully he'll be able to bring it home. Less than half a lap to go now. But that's a bizarre end to what was a promising race for Gary. Joe Marshall Burks, it's been a brilliant, brilliant race so far. Really enjoyed the battle between these two. Very happy that we get to do it another two times this weekend. But the first victory of the day is going to go to Joe Marshall Burks, unless he throws it into the kitty litter at Lodge Corner. That was a beautifully controlled slide through the right hander at Lodge. Heads to the start finish line then, and Joe Marshall Burks takes the first win of the day at Alton Park. A brilliant drive there. Great drive to get past James Kell, who ends up in second place at the flag. And Gary Townsend will come home in third, but somewhat delayed there towards the end of the race for reasons that aren't immediately clear. Matt Pickford was fourth, Clyde Powell's fifth, then Simon Fleet, Darren Kell, and Simon Orange dropping down to eighth after his penalty. And likewise, Declan Lee Knight. David O'Reilly was tenth from Christina Holly. Natalie Brooks, Duncan Harris, Liz Walton, Chris Lindley, and Jude Worley. We lost Steve Dolman and Patrick Collins in spectacular fashion with that shunt. Alex Miller, also in retirement. So it was quite a race. Uh, James kept you honest the whole time. You want to talk us through that? We had a pretty poor start, um, which me and James got a lead. And we knew we were pretty equal all the way around the old track through uh, qualifying. So it was going to be an hard race, but it was a good way, can't wait for the next one because it's going to be even better than the first one. <laughs> so you seem to be working hard there, for giving first place a hard time. You know, do you want to talk through the race? Um, yeah, I mean, I got a good start, um, pulled away in front, managed to get in front through the first corner, and then uh, Alton's quite an easy track to defend around, so it was it was good up until a point. And then my tyres were starting to go, and I saw Joe on the outside, and he was right alongside my door brake really late, so I was like, OK, we're going in t together in first turn, and um, I was like, I'm not going to squeeze him out because um, that's a fair move. And uh, yeah, you got me there, and then sort of fire and ice from there, really. I mean, um, uh, because it's so easy to defend, it's hard to lunge. Um, but yeah, no, it was just he was quick in some sections, I was quick in others, and it was just sort of like following each other around, really, by the end. But it was a really good race, really enjoyed it. Right, so you seem to be keeping first and second uh, honest there. Do you want to talk us through that? Yeah, I had a, had a good start. Um, uh, I got alongside a pair of them, I think, into turn one, and um, then just sort of sat behind for the rest of the race, really. Uh, real good battle the two lads were having. Um, uh, touching each other quite a bit. I was hanging on for a, to see if they take each other out, but they didn't. So eventually I dropped off the, the back a few yards and then I just drifted away the, the last couple of laps, really. So kind of keep it safe and go look forward to the next race? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, start the same place again and uh, try and do the same, but stay with them until the end this time. Race two of the BRSEC Mazda Super Series is about to go underway. They start as they finish the last race, but could we have a new winner? Andy, it's over to you to find out. So cars on the grid then ahead of our second race. As Mike said, they start roughly how they finished the first race. There is one difference though. Kell and Townsend on row one, not necessarily what you would have expected. Pickford and Clock Powell's row two. Simon Fleet and Joe Marshall Burks, race one winner, down on row number three. That was because of a post-race penalty that he picked up. Darren Kell and Simon Orange are next. Then Declan Lee and David O'Reilly to round out the top ten ahead of the rest who will try to come from behind, including our three non-finishers from race one. Uh, we are Steve Dolman, Alex Miller and Patrick Collins. So, the post-race penalty for uh, Joe Marshall Burks means that this is now a particularly intriguing race because he's got a few cars between himself and his race one sparring partner, James Kell. Let's see what happens there. Lights go out. Away we go. Patrick Collins in this all too familiar position of coming from the pack of the grid after a non-finish in the previous race. They've done a good job to get the car fixed, though. Gary Townsend has got a good job to get the lead into turn number one. Kell is second. Clyde Powell's going around the outside of Matt Pickford for third. A few cars on the grass further back. Let's hope they all get through safely. On board with Pickford, though, as Joe Marshall Burks begins his climb to the front of the field, going for fourth place here into Cascade corner and he'll take it as well on the inside line sideways there for David O'Reilly though in the 112 car just 
It's the apex there up the inside goes Christina Holly. Something she wasn't able to do in race one was get past the 112 car, but she's done it already here, halfway around the first lap in race number two. On board with Collins then. Car in front of us, I think might be Chris Lindley there going through. And Collins follows him past into Island Bend. So that really did cost David O'Reilly. The slide at Cascades on the opening lap killed your momentum down the lakeside straight. And because it's the start of the race, everybody else is right behind you. And they just go driving straight past. There's nothing you can do to stop it. Riley now under pressure from the next wave of cars as well. And that's the 26 car going through of Duncan Harris. Alex Miller as well, recovering from the back after mechanical issues, but him out of the previous race in the Bora Motorsport car. It's already a jumbled up order, really, then, with Townsend leading the way. James Kell second, Powell's third, Marshall Burke's fourth, then Pickford fifth, then Fleet, Darren Kell, ahead of Declan Lee and Simon Orange, both of whom got those penalties for. Um, start line infringements in the previous race. And Joe Marshall Burke's penalty, by the way, something I've never seen before. It was, and this is exactly what I got on my result sheet, an SD camera card infringement. I can't think what that might be. Maybe it wasn't handed over to, well, it wasn't formatted right. I've absolutely no idea, but it wasn't. Uh, <laughs> that is what the infringement was. And apparently the suitable penalty is a five place grid penalty for the next race. So that's why he's starting down in fourth position. That started down in sixth position, excuse me, he's running down in fourth, he's going for third now, the inside of Powell's into Lodge Corner, is Clive going to turn in? Yes, and really it was on Joe Marshall Burks there to back off to avoid contact, which he did, so keep it clean. And Gary Townsend leads the opening lap, never did get to the bottom of what Gary's issue was at the end of race one either, when he dropped about eight seconds to the leaders, having been right with them, but uh, he's running inside, turning in the race lead at the moment, there is Declan Lee defending from Simon Orange, Christina Holly going after them, then Patrick Collins, Patrick Collins and uh, the 23 car behind him there of Natalie Brooks, and Natalie Brooks that he was following through on that first lap, the other white cars, so uh, yeah, Collins making good progress here then, already, but he was in race one and then he came across an errant Steve Dolman at turn one. <laughs> is that James Kell's also wise to that now. But I'm not sure there's much that he can do to cover that, really. Randy Marshall Burks is within striking range, and again, he, set, he sets this up nice and early, forces Kell to defend into Lodge. Carries more speed through Deer Leap and across the start finish line. As a result, moves over though just to defend there from Gary Townsend slightly, but actually he might have got up the inside of Kell here as he outfox James Kell already into the first corner. They go, and yeah, Joe Marshall Burks on the inside line carries the speed into the corner. Now, can Kell fight back? This did happen early on in race number one, but no, this time Marshall Burks is neat and tidy off Old Hall Corner and actually does go through at the first opportunity. Nice driving there. So Marshall Burks leads the well, way, Kell second, third for. Gary Townsend, fourth place still right with them. Look, just, just there, this Clive Powell's. And it's this man Pickford in fifth, which is one place behind where he finished in race number one. Pickford getting a nice toe down the straights. Further back, meanwhile, Patrick Collins has just overtaken Declan Lee. And Declan, would you believe, for the second race in a row, is being given a 10 second start infringement penalty. And this time we are being told it's for a jump start. So Declan Lee, the number 11 car, his, both of his races really have been affected before they even got underway properly. So he's lost a place on track, but he'll possibly lose more as a result of that penalty. Past the SO sign, which is a nostalgic uh, nod to Alton Park's uh, historical appearance on that part of the circuit back in the day. Into Old Hall Corner they go for what must be the final time because they're running low on time in this one now. Joe Marshall Burks hang on to the flag. James Kell, I'm sure, will give this everything he's got. It may not be for points, but it's the one to race win. That really is the only point of racing in the Super Series. Not the only point, but it's the big point of racing in the Super Series for winners' trophies. And that was a mistake for Joe Marshall Burks that might just cost him his winners' trophy because Kell is back alongside again. But it's the outside line into Island Bend. If he'd have been a car length or so closer, he might have been able to complete that manoeuvre. But Marshall Burks, despite another little error, is able for now to hang on. Out of Shell. Down to the British Cane for this, the final time of asking. Half a lap to go then. James Kell all over the curb, through the left and through the right, but the car seems well balanced over those curbs. And again, he's a bit quicker than Marshall Burks off the chicane. Dabs the brakes there. Now, that's not because he's chickening out and making a move. That's because he just walloped those curbs at the chicane, and that can cause what's called... Uh, 
pad knockoff, it can knock the pads, the brake pads away from the brake discs, and that means that when you get to the next corner, you've got no brakes, which of course is not ideal. So um, that's why sometimes you see if the driver has a particularly rough ride over a kerb, I think he did it again there, can we get a nick of brook? They'll just touch the brake, just to make sure they've still got a firm brake pedal underneath them. This is a firm challenge now to get the race lead away, though, for James Kelly, side by side again into Druid's corner for the final time. If he can get a better exit, he might be able to get to the inside at Lodge, but no, he hasn't been able to do it. So now just one more corner left for Joe Marshall Burks to defend. And you can't see him making a mistake here. James Kell can weave around in his mirrors all he likes, but it would require a mistake for Marshall Burks. Now I think for this to change hands, off the corner they go, off onto the grass goes James Kelly. He's got to run. It will be a drag race to the line, this. They might just be side by side. Get the photo finish cameras ready. It's just about going to be Joe Marshall Burks by a tenth of a second in the end over James Kell for the race victory. Fabulous racing between the two of them. Clyde Powell comes home an impressive third with Gary Townsend fourth and Simon Fleet fifth. Matt Pickford, Darren Kell, Patrick Collins was eighth ahead of Alex Miller and Declan Lee. Then Christina Holly and Duncan Harris just outside the top ten. Cyan Orange was a non-finisher, while Steve Dolman sadly was not able to take the start after the damage sustained in race one. So that was a bit of an exciting race, especially towards the end. The weather started closing in. How was that for you? Well, we, on, I was on me, I think it was fifth lap, and uh, everything was down to normal. I come down to Shell Oil, it just quite a bit of rain. So I only stayed pretty wide, which did uh, James caught me up. Um, then obviously the rest of the track was dry, but tricky conditions, but uh, it was a good race, loved it. Has James given you a bit of a run for the money? Yeah, he was. Um, we got past him, I just, he had missed a gear onto the, onto the straight, so we got past him through that, but then I thought I gained about two, three seconds, the next minute I look in my rear view mirror, he's right behind me again, but he managed to hold the boss, so hopefully yeah, race three do the same. Race three is about to go out for the BRSEC Mazda Super Series, with Joseph Marshall Burks and James Kell having fantastic battles over the past two races. We'll hand it over to Andy to see how the battle commences this race. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Well, here we go then. This should be a good one. The gloves usually come off in race three of the weekend, so I'm anticipating lots of action. Joe Marshall Burke and James Kell share the front row once again, as they did at the start of the day. Clyde Powell's and Gary Townsend on the second, with Simon Fleet and Matt Pickford then Darren Kell and Patrick Collins, this time not starting from the back. Alex Miller and Declan Lee are next, ahead of Christina Holly and Duncan Harris, then David O'Reilly and Natalie Brooks, Liz Walton and Chris Lindley, with Jude Worley and Simon Orridge are only retirement from the previous race at the back. We have sadly lost uh, Steve Dolman now. He's uh, not entered into this race because his car was too badly damaged in race number one. He was fine, but the car was unfortunately not so much, so the Paul Sheard racing team have an extensive repair bill to get that ready. Here, though, comes the start of the race. Who gets into Old Hall Corner first? Will it be Marshall Burks or will it be Kell? Or will it maybe be somebody else? It's going to be one of those two. It's going to be Kell, isn't it? James Kell in the green car gets himself in front into the first turn. Marshall Burks second and Gary Townsend around the outside for third. There's Declan Lee up the inside of Patrick Collins. All through safely. Well, in varying degrees, but yes, they're all going to survive and make their way down the Lee uh, Avenue into Denton's. Townsend did then get third, so Powell's down to fourth, then Fleet, Darren Kell, Pickford's gone backwards a little bit here from sixth on the grid. There's Patrick Collins and uh, Alex Miller one to watch for. He's not had a brilliant weekend so far, a non-finish and a ninth is not really what his pace probably deserves, in all honesty. Side by side for third place there, Clyde Powell's. That was a nice move on the inside of uh, Gary Townsend, who's off the road, I think. Yep, the car's bouncing around, Gary Townsend off the track. There he is in the background. He's got a pick his way through that maze of rectus cell barriers on the inside of the shell hair to get back on track, by which point, no doubt, he'll be right at the back, so that's a shame for Gary. The weekend that promised so much, looks like it will yield just the one third place from race one, as far as his podium appearances are concerned. There he is, he's back on, the high even Jude Wall at the back of the field, so he is last, and has now got a long and hard road ahead of him to get back to the front. There is the front of the field, though, Kell from Marshall Burks, and then Darren Kell now, on the outside of Clyde Powell, so... Darren Kell having started seventh is into third place now. Bit of a lock up there for Declan Lee into the Izzy Chicane and into the Brook Corner. So that's uh, yeah, it's been a real shuffle there. Then Darren Kell to a podium place now because Darren Kell had a podium finish in the Super Series before. And I'm getting ahead of myself by about 18 and a half minutes, but uh, I don't believe he has. Looking through the results from this year, he certainly hasn't, and I don't recall him being on the podium last year. So that man there, the orange number three car, in third position now. That means to him, if he can get himself a podium before the end of the race, maybe even one two with his uh, son James, but uh, that's a little unlikely, you'd have to say, given the pace that James and indeed Joe Marshall Burks have had this weekend. Lodge corner with Patrick Collins then, end of lap one, and the top two 
This is going to be a fascinating battle between the two of them, a resumption of their battle. It's one apiece at the moment, one all, really. James has won one, one race. And, uh, no, tell a lie, Joe Marshallberg did win that first race, didn't he? Even though Kel led most of the way. So, yeah, Kel 2 nil up this weekend. But, uh, excuse me, Marshallberg's 2 nil up this weekend with Kel uh, yet to win at Alton Park. But we both had those uh, victories at Brands Hatch start of the season. James also had a fairly sizable shunt in the second race whilst in the lead, so arguably should have won that second race, he will say. Ah, that's Gary Townsend. Oh, and that's Simon Orange. So Simon Orange has had a spin at Cascades. Now, one of the marshals there was sort of waving at him not to carry on. I don't know why that would be. Ah, there's a car off at Cascades as well. Now, who might that be? We've lost a couple there. That all seemed to have been linked, didn't it, really, with uh, Orange and... Whoever that was that's gone off, there is the safety car just ahead of James Kell. So Kell leads the way, Marshall Burke second, then Darren Kell third. Ah, and there is Natalie Brooks. So there we go, we got there in the end. It was Natalie that went off down at Cascades. Now the car is being towed away, is it? No, it's being driven away. So it's, it was just buried, but is allowed now to continue under its own steam. But only as far as the pit lane. Once you uh, rejoin the track with assistance from the marshals, you're not allowed to... Uh, then continuing the race, so Natalie will be out, even though the car is completely undamaged, which has got to be frustrating. He's about to see, I believe, the last lap board. There it is, waiting for him, and he will go on to the final 2.69 mile lap of the Alton Park International Circuit. Towards Old Hall, and behind him, the battle's still raging on, but I'm not sure how many of these are likely to change, really. This is Declan Lee then, still holding on to seventh place at the moment with Collins behind him. James Kell then out of Cascades, back down the lakeside straight. Here we are with Collins though, and Declan Lee's run wide at Cascades. And just as I said, this wasn't likely to change. It looks like it will. Just a mistake for Declan Lee, and Patrick Collins says thank you very much. Mirror signal manoeuvre, drive straight past him down the lakeside straight. So that was fortunate stuff there for. Collins, it's out of shell goes James Kell, sweeping through the right hander towards the British chicane. Yeah, top three looking fairly secure now. I believe that incident is under investigation though between Powell's and Marshall Burks, so that will be a discussion that runs well into the evening, I would imagine, but uh, it won't really affect this man. James Kell looks as though he's going to come home a winner now for the second time this year. Be the Marshall Burks has three wins, Kel has two, but of course they've not either of them done a full season like last year where we had um, a couple of drivers, Josh Jackson being one of them that did do most of the season, if not all of the season. Um, they, uh, and it was fascinating to watch their win tally as build up as the year went on, but this year we've seen much more variety of winners because we've seen much more variety of drivers on the grid, but it's always nice to have James and Joe on the grid because they are very evenly matched usually share the wins between themselves when they race at the same time. And that's what's happened here at Alton Park. Two race victories for Joe Marshall Burks. And one now for James Kell, his second win of the year in the MX5 Super Series. He comes over Deer Lee across the start finish line, takes the checkered flag and wins race number three here at Alton Park. Joe Marshall Burks second on the road, but we're hearing post race he has been disqualified for that collision with Clyde Powell, so it's uh, actually going to be Darren Kell in second, Simon Fleet third, then Matt Pickford and Patrick Collins, Declan Lee and Alex Miller are next ahead of Gary Townsend and Christina Holly with David O'Reilly rounding out the top ten. We lost Duncan Harris, Clyde Powell, Natalie Brooks, Simon Orange and Joe Marshall-Burke sadly disqualified from the result. So it's been on the cards all weekend, finally, top step. Yeah, uh, finally, um, but it's, yeah, it's been a hard one, but it, uh, the gearbox oil chain, uh, helped. Uh, we changed that over between rounds and um, made it last 20 minutes, which was great. At the end, it was like, ooh, it's starting to go again, but it was really good. 